Hey guys, this is Technology Mafia. A while ago I said that the ideal lens for the Sony a6000 would be a Sony 16 to 50 millimeter constant f 2.8 lens. Unfortunately, Sony has not produced that lens, but they did back in the day for the A mount Sony DSLRs. So this is the lens that I am talking about. This is it, SAL 16 to 50 to 8. And let me give you a close up shot of what it looks like. So right off the bat, when I got this lens in the mail, it felt like a substantial piece of glass. It's quite a bit thicker than even the 18 to 105 G lens that I recently reviewed, and it weighs a bit more as well. So at the very top, you could see it says F 2.8 there, 16 to 50 SSM, which I'm guessing stands for super silent motor, but I'm just making that up. Has a nice little window for focus, so it'll show you uh, focusing distances from a minimum to infinity. The bottom ring here is your zoom range, so that's 50 millimeters. You can see that the barrel extends and back all the way down to 16. That is it. The bottom that is the mounting system. It looks a little bit different than the E-mount and it has a nice little orange ring around it. Around the front, you have a nice large glass element. And if you extend the barrel, that's what it looks like. Sony makes a number of adapters to adapt these A-mount lenses to the E-mount so that you can use them with your A6000, A6300, A6500. There are two primary ones that are somewhat newer and they are the LAEA3 and the LAEA4. The LAEA3 relies on the internal focusing of the camera. However, it does not provide continuous autofocus in video. And since I primarily shoot video with my A6000, I wanted continuous autofocus. In order for me to get that, I had to go out and buy the LAEA4. So this is what the box looks like. It is the 35 millimeter full frame E-mount, translucent mirror technology. So essentially there is a DSLR like mirror in between. You lose a third stop of light by using this adapter, but a third of one stop isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. You can see what it comes with, the adapter, a pouch, and a couple of lens caps. Here is the pouch, nicely padded inside so you can store your adapter. And here is the adapter. So I have the rear lens cap on, the front one off, and you could see the mirror. Let me take the rear cap off. Even though there is a mirror in there, it is see-through. So very interesting little adapter. When you mount it on your A6000, it does bulge out. However, there is a tripod mount below. You could still balance it on a tripod without any issues. And going along with the same theme, it has the orange ring around it. Around the back, typical E-mount. When you combine the two of these together, this is what it looks like. You have orange dots here, you put them together, and you mount the lens just like that. So everything lines up. Once you mount this on your A6000, your focus window is at the top, and it is a very heavy package, and definitely thicker than most other lenses that I've used on the A6000. Okay, so here are some of the limitations of this package. So the lens is a constant f2.8, which means from 16 millimeters all the way to 50 millimeters, it's 2.8. However, in video mode, the adapter can only record at a maximum aperture of 3.5. So that means you're losing, uh, what is that, a 5 eighths of a stop. If my math is correct, I might be wrong. But you're losing a little bit of light when you're recording video with this lens because you can only record at 3.5. When you compare that to the kit lens, however, you can zoom in to 50 millimeter and you will still be at f3.5 versus being at 5.6 on the kit lens. Another thing is that once you use this adapter, when you're focusing, you don't have access to all 300 plus autofocus points, depending on your camera body, 
you only have access to about 20. That isn't a big issue, but it's kind of like going back to using a Canon DSLR that only has about 20 autofocus points. In my experience, the autofocus is pretty snappy. It's quiet. It's actually pretty silent because of the SSM motor and it works pretty well. It's not as good as a native lens, but it's pretty close. Let me go ahead and show you some sample pictures and videos using this lens combo starting now. So those are the sample images and sample video. The disclaimer that I have is my copy of this lens I purchased used on eBay. I paid about $330 for it. It however is not perfect. It was advertised as perfect but it was far from it. Um, I don't know if I can catch this on the camera, it might be a little bit too dark. So I'm going to use a flashlight to illustrate this for you but you could see on the face of the lens, there is a substantial amount of lens fungus on that front lens element. And it's not on the outside lens, it's actually on the inside of that curved piece of glass. That is definitely affecting the photos that I'm getting and the video that I'm recording, uh, which just is not good. So the moral of the story is never buy used lenses on eBay. I'm just kidding. It's fine to buy used lenses, I do it all the time, but you just have to be careful with who you're buying from and make sure that they have an adequate return policy. All right, so that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm curious as to what you guys think about this lens combo and what I should do with this lens. So I'm gonna put up a poll right here. First option is to just return the lens and get another copy. Second option is to return the lens and not get another copy because I should focus more on E-mount lenses that support better autofocus and all of the autofocus points. Third option, keep the lens and try to clean out the fungus. So comment down below as to what you guys thought about this lens combo and then make sure to participate in the poll. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the support and all the likes and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.